Hello everyone. Welcome back to our weekly webinar series. My name is Faiza Hashmi. I'm the tax director here at Press Cooper. Today I've been joined by my colleague, Mahar Abzal, who is the managing director. And together we will be taking you through today's webinar. So last month, um, last month FTA had released the transfer pricing guide. It's a very detailed guide. It has a lot of information about the transfer pricing methods, the arm length principle, the documentation requirements, um, what will happen in the audit. So what we are doing is that after we gave an overview of the transfer pricing guide in our previous lecture, we have started discussing the guide in more detail and we had discussed in our previous lecture the cup method, the comparable and control price method. And now today we will be discussing the resale price method. So if you guys have missed our lectures or any of the topics of the previous lectures, which are here uh, that we do every week, you can always go to our YouTube channel and you will be able to find all these webinars there. So in case uh, if you would have any questions regarding the webinar, you can always email us at info at crestcooper.com. We will be happy to reply to you. So today I will take you through the recap of our previous uh, lecture, which was the cup method. So uh, the cup method, the comparable uncontrolled price method is basically a comparison between the transactions that we do with a related party. Uh, which is in a controlled um, you know, uh, transaction and that to compare it to an uncontrolled transaction, which is one where we are doing a transaction with a third party. So we need to compare both of these transactions, but these transactions, they need to be, be done under similar circumstances, meaning that uh, the it cannot be that you know you are doing a let's say a sale of goods with a third party and then you are comparing it to some services that you provided to a related party. So they uh, have to be, of course, uh, similar kind of transactions, similar kind of, um, you know, goods or category of goods that you are uh, maybe selling or the same type of services that you are giving to both the parties. So in that case, you can use this cup method. So when uh, you compare the, both these transactions, the controlled transactions with the related party and the comparable and controlled uh, transactions, which are with the third party, and if there are any differences, you need to make these adjustments. Um, and so, of course, you need to identify a comparable transaction, you know, one related to the same kind of transaction in this, uh, in these cases or the same kind of arrangement that you might have with the related party and that with the third party. So to do this, there are two ways. So you can either have internal cup or you can have external cup. So what that means is that if, uh, for example, you are doing sale of goods. So if the sale of good uh, that you are doing with a related party, if maybe you are doing the same kind of uh, sale of the same category of the goods with a third party. So in that case, it means that an internal cup is there because you have a similar transaction that has been being done with a third party. But it might be the case that you do not have a third party where, you know, the same kind of transaction is being done or the same, you know, goods are being sold to third parties that you are selling to a related party. Then you need to look for an external cup, which means you need to look at the same kind of similar transactions that is being done with, uh, you know, between third parties, meaning a supplier, um, you know, a different supplier might be giving the same kind of service or the same kind of uh, selling the same kind of goods that you are selling to uh, a, a, you know, a third party. So then you need to get this external cup information uh, to do this price adjustment. So let me just explain to you that with the help of this diagram. So for example, company A and company B, they are both related parties. They have the same shareholders and the transaction which they are doing in this case, particular case is selling wheat. So that is a control transaction done between the related parties. So if you see in the first part, part of it where the internal cup is being mentioned, the same company is doing the same transaction with a third party. So that means they know what is the price that they have sold the same kind of uh, product, the same wheat to the third party. So they have an internal cup available. Um, but it might be the case that that's not there. So then any other market supplier available in the market, if they are selling wheat to a third party, then you need to find this external cup. So now this is also one of the negatives of this, uh, this method that like the positive, uh, let's discuss the positive first, the positive that this is like the most reliable way. So if you have an internal cup available, 
display, that means you already know what price you're selling to the third party ad. Uh, and then if you don't have that internal uh, cup available, that is one of the challenges because that means you need to find this external cup and it is a very, it's very complex to get this information. It is not that easily available in the market. Now, in case of internal cup, it could be that, you know, it's not as simple as that you are selling the same product to the third party. It might be that the same product that you're selling to the third party, there are some certain adjustments that might be required. It could be that, you know, very simple adjustments. It could be that, you know, maybe the third party is buying from a lot of uh, suppliers. So it is buying in small quantities and the related party is buying in bulk quantities and you have bulk uh, quantity discounts. So obviously you need to make the adjustment for that. So that it might be simple as that, or it might be more challenging, like maybe, you know, your uh, related parties in a different market, maybe they are in Africa, maybe, you know, the third party is sitting in UAE. So there has to be um, so certain adjustments which require a lot of, you know, um, complexities to establish what, you know, that adjustment would require. Uh, and that is one of the most challenging parts of this uh, method. So like you said, so if, uh, there are a lot of adjustments and you cannot uh, you know accurately make those adjustments then you do, you do need to look for another method and then you know deviate from this and it's good to have um, you know another method that you will also choose to see that how much is the price uh, you know the related party price or the arm length price being different in those methods and you know some of the challenges like we discussed are the geographical market might be different there might be utilization of some intangibles or there might be, you know, significant contractual differences. Um, example, it could be that, you know, the quality of the product is different. It might be that, you know, the third party uh, has asked for a different quality of the good or maybe, you know, they're, uh, maybe they are in a different market like we just discussed. So just as a conclusion, uh, for all related party or connected a uh, person transaction, we need to find what is the arm length price, which is the same price that you would have done if they were not your related party. And for this, there are a lot of methods. One of them is the one that we had just discussed, the cup method. There's other methods available, uh, like the resale price method that Mahar is going to discuss today. So you might require to do benchmarking studies to, you know, uh, to help you with setting price for these uh, uh, methods because like I said you do need some information which might not be readily available to you inside the company. So the cup method like we discussed compares the transaction between the related parties which is in a controlled transaction that to one that we are doing with an un, uh, with a you know third party which is an uncontrolled transaction to see that what uh, is the difference and like we said that locating the external cup would be a challenge. So um, like we said, for if it's services, there might be some factors which influence the adjustment of the internal cups, which could be the terms or delivery location. Um, it could be that, you know, uh, one uh, company wants the delivery to be express delivery. So the charges are different, you know, for the product, same product to give, uh, you know, early delivery. Uh, for goods, it might be that, you know, there's physically uh, the products are different, the quality is different, or, you know, there can be a, a very, vast range of contractual differences between uh, different parties. So it is very difficult um, how to gauge what these adjustments are going to be. So if the, uh, it is available, you know, the price to an independent party, then it is very straightforward for this method, then you can use that. Uh, but remember that any method that you use, any, you know, adjustments that you make, you do need to have, you know, documentation to support that. There needs to be credible evidence. So we will discuss in our later webinars, you know, the transfer pricing documentation about, you know, which companies are, uh, needs to have a certain type of documentation. But irrespective of that, all companies need to be able to prove to FTA during audit that, you know, why they chose this method, why it is suitable, why those adjustments were made. The details need to be, you need to know what the pricing formulas are, the agreements if you have with any of the parties. Um, you know, if there are any discounts like we discussed that have been given. So every information that is making you set the price, you need to have some documentation for this. So I'm just going to hand over now to Mahar. And then he is going to take you to the rest of uh, the presentation.
Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Thank you very much, Faiza, for giving us again brief understanding of the cup method for the transfer pricing. First of all, uh, from my side, I would like to say apologies that we were supposed to have this session yesterday, but uh, some sort of very urgent commitment due to this, we were not able to have this session. Apologies for this, but the notification was sent to all of you that this session has been postponed by one day. So again, apologies. Let's taking this session further today as Ms. Feather, we are going to discuss a resale price method of transfer pricing. We have already discussed the cup method of transfer pricing. Today we will discuss the resale price method of transfer pricing. We all know that there are five methods given in the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development guidelines. These five methods are comparable, uncontrolled, cup method, resale price method, cost plus method, transactional net margin method, transactional profit split method. We'll discuss all these methods one by one. But we are we already covered cup method. Today we are going to discuss resale price method of transfer pricing. Just keep in mind the whole exercise that we are doing, the core objective is to assess the fair and arm length price because the transaction is being executed as per under transaction is being executed in between the related parties transaction is being executed in between the company and the connected persons we know the connected persons are directors officers and owners of the company related party they are fourth degree of kinship if the transactions are being executed in between the related parties or if the transaction are being executed with the connected person, there is a possibility that the profits are being shifted from the high tax jurisdiction to the low tax jurisdiction, from the high tax entity to the low tax entity. The core objective is to ascertain the arm length price. To ascertain the arm length price, the second method is the resale price method. For the resale price method, for the resale price method, these are the exact wording of the OECD guidelines and almost the same wording has been produced in the guideline issued by the Federal Tax Authority. This is a second conventional method to assess the arm length price and the OECD, they said a transfer pricing method based on the price, based on the price at which a product that has been purchased from an associate enterprise, the product has been purchased from the related party. The product has been purchased from the related party. Okay, my pen is not working. Sir. Can do we have the second pen? Yeah. Okay, if you have, can you give it to me, please? Thank you. Okay, sorry for this. So basically, this is important. The project has been purchased from the related party and resold to an independent enterprise. There are two, basically three parties. One into related party, third and in, in, independent enterprise. The goods have been purchased. Goods have been purchased from the related party, but it has been sold to an independent enterprise. Okay, so this is fine if this is not available. Okay. So goods has been purchased from the related party, but these goods have been sold. Okay, the goods have been purchased from the related party and these goods have been sold to the independent enterprise. The resale price is reduced with the resale price margin. What is the left after subtracting the resale price can be regarded after adjustment for the other costs associated with the purchase of the product and arm length price. So basically, party A and party B, these two are related parties. If party A is selling the goods to party B, these are the related parties. There is a possibility that this price has been impaired. There is a possibility this price has been compromised. So once this party B is selling goods to the independent party, that will be for sure arm length price. But we are concerned with the price to know in between A and B. 
So basically, the price at which party B is selling the goods or services goods into the market, that price less we need to deduct the margin. Once we are deducting the margin of B and once we are adjusting the additional cost of the B, remaining will be my arm length price, the price which has been at the which would have been for the goods, the delivery of the goods in between A and B. So I'm repeating, what is the price it has been charged for between the related parties A and B? If the sale price of the B is being adjusted, sale price, we know sale price, less margin, less cost, it will be the purchase price. So we need to do the reverse working. At the B level, we need to ascertain the, what is the sales price of the B. We need to ascertain the competitive, uncontrolled, fair market value margin. We need to ascertain the cost of the B. If out of the sales price, we are deducting margin. If out of the sales price, we are deducting cost of the B. Remaining will be the purchase price of B. This purchase price should be the arm length price. Then we need to compare this purchase price that would have been in between A and B with the actual purchase price. We need to make the adjustment. So this is the crux basically. We need to do the reverse working by taking the sales of B, taking margin at the market price, considering the cost of the B. We need to do the reverse working. We need to arrive at the fair market value in between A and B. The same has been written here. A transfer pricing method based on the price at which a product that has been purchased from associated enterprise is resold to an independent enterprise. The resale price is reduced by the resale price margin. We have already discussed. It will be reduced by the margin. It will be reduced by the cost of the B. The remaining will be the purchase price of B. So this method, basically, we need to look into the price at which the goods are being resold to an independent party. Then we need to adjust this price with the resale margin. Then we need to adjust the expenses of B. Just you need to keep in mind the example A to B, B to the market, A to B, B to the third party. So the price at which B is selling to third party, we need to reverse it back after adjusting the margin, after adjusting the cost of the B, remaining will be the purchase price. Remaining should be the purchase price of B, not what is the exact purchase price. We are looking for what should be the purchase price of B. Then we need to match it with the arm length price and compared with the related party transaction, we need to make the adjustment. This is how we can ascertain the fair market value in between A and B by doing the reverse working. So in this, in this RPM, the reseller should select a comparable uncontrolled transaction. Yes, we need to identify the comparable uncontrolled transaction. We need to ascertain the margin. First of all, we need to identify the similar transaction. Then we need to ascertain the margin that the third party is showing into the market for in the similar circumstances, similar conditions. Then we need to ascertain the price of the B. Then we need to do the reverse working. And if there is no difference in the price that would have been and that is actually, then we can say this is the uncontrolled transaction. Or this is a controlled transaction, but there were differences. And for the differences, if we are making any adjustment, then we can say, okay, after the adjustment, the price will be uncontrolled price. This is a fair market value price. We need to do the comparability analysis as well. In this comparability analysis, there are two types of comparable, like the cup method. One is internal comparable. Second is external comparable. In the internal comparable, if B is selling the goods, at the fair market margin in the market, we can say what are the B margin of the B that I, what are the price, the percentage margin B is being charged will be internal comparison, internal comparable. And if we don't know if any other party is selling the goods into the market with the certain percentage, that percentage margin we need to ascertain. It will be considered external comparable. I have given an example like if A is reselling the goods to B, okay. A related party 15% margin while the product at 20% margin. To see a non-related, then 20% is internal comparable. At the same time, under the similar circumstances, if X limited is reselling the product to Y limited and they have a margin of 21%, that will be considered external comparable. So what is our formula basically? If we are discussing whatever we are discussed till now, if we are correct, looking into the, putting into the formula, what is the formula? It will be resale price. Yes, at which the goods at the B is selling into the market, the price at which the B is selling the goods into the market, less resale price margin through the internal comparable or through the external comparable, less the related expenses remaining should be the purchase price of B. 
So this thing, this formula, we know this sales price is equal to cost plus margin. In this, in this formula, we know the sales price because the price at which the B would be selling into the market, we know the price of the B. We know the margin. This is the most challenging part, how to calculate the margin. We know the margin. We need to look into the margin. This through the internal comparables or through the external comparables. We need to identify the margin. So out of these things, we know two things, sales price and margin. Third is the cost. Might be there's a cost of reseller, might be some internal cost of B. If the B has some internal cost, we know that cost that will always be on the fair value, fair market value. What is the purchase price? That is the compromise price. This is the compromise price. We need to identify that. Out of all this, out of this basically, sales price is equal to cost plus margin. We know two things. Third thing, cost. Out of the cost, internal cost, we know. Remaining is the external cost. We need to identify the external cost at the market value through the reverse calculation. Operational comparability, this is the word that has been used in the OECD guideline. And this word has been used in the FTA guide as well. Functional analysis, or this is called comparability analysis. Just look into the status of the B. When the B, B is buying and selling, might be there's a possibility. B is buying, selling without adding any value. Second possibility is B is buying. Once the B is buying, B is adding the value. After adding the value, then B is selling. Third possibility, B is buying, B is doing marketing, B is doing research, B is connecting with a lot of sellers, a lot of customers doing marketing, a lot of innovation, all these things. If the research development, if anything B is doing, then the B situation will be different. So what I'm trying to say, we need to identify the functional, we need to do the functional analysis of B. We need to identify the role of the B. We need to do the compa operational comparability. We need to do the functional analysis, what B is doing. B will always charge its price by considering the functions conducted by B, risk taken by B, asset utilized by B. So we need to enter all these things as well, because if B is buying and selling, the margin will be lesser. If B is buying, adding value, then selling, they will be asking for more margin. If the B is doing the marketing, they will be asking for more margin. If the B has a territorial rights, they, they are basically, they have the territorial rights to sell the goods in the specific region. If they're buying the goods, they have the territorial need. For sure, they would have paid something for these territorial rights. So if they have territory rights, if they have territory right, they will be asking, B will be asking some sort of premium. In the same way, if there's a chain, multiple supply, multiple suppliers in the chain, A, B, C, D, E, F, then every supplier will be sharing. So all these factors, basically what I'm trying to say, whenever we are calculating what is the cost of the B, we need to consider the function performed by B, function performed by reseller, risk taken by reseller, and addition by the reseller, as utilized by the reseller. We need to consider all these factors to ascertain the markup, to adjust the markup. So these factors are also very important. They are functional analysis. Just look into this example. For example, the UA subsidiary XYZ of a Japanese parent company, ABC, sells high quality product in the UAE, which are being manufactured by ABC in Japan. The goods are being manufactured in Japan. ABC is in Japan. They have a subsidiary in XYZ in the UAE. The cost of the products purchased from ABC is 100. Cost is 100. We already discussed three factors. Sales price, margin, cost. Out of this cost, we have discussed two more costs. Controlled cost, uncontrolled cost. This 100 is might be, there is a possibility. There is a possibility. I'm not asking 100% this is a controlled cost, but there is a possibility that this, this 100 is a controlled cost. The cost of the product purchased from ABC because both are related parties, 100. While the resale price to the independent party is 150. Goods are being bought from the related party. Goods are being sold to the independent party as per the definition of OECD guidelines. Goods are being bought from the related party, sold to the independent party at 150. ABC also sells the same quality, same quality of the products to an independent distributor, PQR in the UAE. Now the ABC, which is a Japanese parent company, they, the Japanese parent company selling the goods to PQR as well in the UAE market. The functional analysis, 
shows that x, y, z and p keyword perform similar functions. Functions are similar, both parties. The gross profit ratio of p q r was found to be 10%. p q r you keep in mind, p q r is not a related party of the IBC. p q r is buying the goods from third party, selling into the market, and they are making margin is 10%. We have already discussed margin, we know. This is the most difficult part in the RPM method. How to identify the margin? Margin is 10%. X, Y, Z bears warranty risk costing 10 per unit. While for the product sold by the PQR, warranty risk is borne by ABC. Moreover, we have already discussed this while doing the operational analysis and functional analysis. Moreover, ABC provides marketing sports to PQR, while XYZ bears its marketing and promotional expenses, which cost them 20 per unit. So the objective is the price that has been charged in between ABC and XYZ, is this arm length price or not? This is our core objective to identify. What we have discussed? We have discussed the first thing we need to identify comparable uncontrolled transfer. First of all, we need to identify the parties. We know the parties. Parties are ABC, XYZ. Third party is XYZ. So third party is PQR. Both are in the similar circumstances. So product is same. Market is same. Functions are same. Risk is same. So what are the margin that the PQR charging principally X, Y, Z would have charged the same margin. Principally X, Y, Z would have charged the same margin of 10%. So if I'm assuming in the comparable circumstances, the margin of X, Y, Z is 10%. So what should be the cost? So if I'm multiplying 150 with the 90%, apologies, pen is not working. Otherwise, it would have been much more in a clearer way. So 150 into 90%, we know this, this 10, this 10, this 10, this 150. 150 is the sales price. 10 is the margin. So 150 into 10, remaining will be the cost. Cost will be 150 into 90%. It will be 135. Cost will be 135. Sorry, one, uh, yeah, I think uh, it will be 150 into 90, 150 into 90, 135. 135 in the cost. So out of this cost of X, Y, Z, out of this cost of X, Y, Z, so this is the margin that was most challenging part for us to identify. We have identified PQR is selling the goods into the UE market to third party at 10% margin. Principally, both of the parties, X, Y, Z and P, Q, R, A, the same risk, same function, same market, same product. So the X, Y, Z principle would have been charging 10%. So if I'm multiplying remaining 150 into 10, it will be 135. 135 is the cost because we know the sale price. Sale price is 150 with the certainty. We know the margin. Margin is 10%. We are very sure about it. This is the market value. Remaining is the cost. We have already discussed the two components of the cost. Two components. One is the controlled cost. Second is the uncontrolled cost. Now the controlled cost of actually is 10 and 20. So 150 into 90%, 135, less 135, less 10, less 20. So 30, the principally this price instead of 100, this price would have been 105. So this is the resale price method. So what we have done, we have at first thing that we have identified the parties. We have identified the uncontrolled transaction. We have identified the margin charged by third party on the uncontrolled price, which is the 10%. Then we have identified the sales price of the related parties reseller into the market. We have reversed by the sales price. We have arrived 135. Out of the 135, we have deducted warranty cost, promo cost, because these are being performed by XYZ. The cost is 30. Remaining, even these functions are being performed by this party, I'm asking, then we need to do the analysis here as well. Out of 130, we need to deduct the 30. Remaining will be 105. This 105 is my fair market value. So ABC principally needs to sell goods to XYZ at 105 instead of 100. The same thing I have briefed here, for example, it's clear that XYP could perform a similar function. So we can assume that the resale price margin is 10%, which is same, which should be same for both parties. If PQR is earning 10% of the resale price, 
then we can assume that the xyz will earn the same which is equal to 115 to 9% 15 per unit xyz is bearing extra promotion and warranty risk so xyz will charge a premium for this yes this is very right which will lead to total resale price margin is equal to 45 which is at then we are asking if the uncontrolled price is 150 and the fair mar sale margin is 45 including all these costs then the resale price principally it would have been 105 instead of 100 Look into another example. This example I have taken it from the guide issued by the FTA. In this example, company A, a free zone entity incorporated in the UAE sells goods to a related party based in the UAE mainland. One is a free zone entity, A. A is a free zone entity. Free zone entity in UAE sells goods to a party, UAE. Company B, A is a free zone entity. B is a mainland entity. A is selling goods to B at 450. An independent entity X purchases similar goods from third parties 400. X, X is also on the mainland. X is buying goods from third parties at 400. So related party transaction is 450. Third party independent price is 400. So can we say like this? No, the price in what are the price at which X is buying? This is a very fair price. The price in between A and B, this is not a fair price. No, this is not correct. First of all, we need to do the function analysis. Why A is charging to B? Might be there is some sort of extra function that the A is performing due to this A is charging some cost. And the, might be the supplier of X is not performing those functions and they are charging the lesser price. Just wanted to give you an example, DDU. One part is giving X work. Other party is giving DDU basis. For sure, the price that the party is charging on DDU or DDP basis, this price will be higher from the X work factory price. So this is the same thing we need to do the functional analysis. Both companies X and Y subsequently resold to third parties at 500. We know this 500. We know 500 is my resale price. So 500 is the resale price of B, 500 is the resale price of X. Purchase price 450, purchase price 400. 50 here is the profit, gross profit. 100 here is the gross profit. Here margin is 10%, here margin is 20%. We need to do the functional analysis. While doing the functional analysis, we have identified company B profit and the resale of the goods is 50. Yes, we know this is a 50. And the resale price margin is 10%. Had company B purchased the goods from a third party, the profit in the resale would have been 100 and the resale price would have been 20%, okay? Now they are asking, we need to do the functional analysis. In the functional analysis, we have been identified. Control transaction shows the company A performs additional logistic functions. If the company A performs the logistic functions, for sure the company will charge premium for this. The transaction is in between A and B, and X is buying from anywhere. So whenever the A is supplying goods to B, a is giving the logistic functions as well. A will ask a premium for this. The costs which are reflecting in the price 450. So 450, why A has charged to be 450? Because A is giving logistic functions. Further investigation shows that the third party supplier doesn't perform these additional logistic functions. Okay, this was the reason basically. Third party doesn't provide, they are providing. It also observed that the company Company X bears the logistic cost, which is the 50. A record these as operating expenses, okay? And also comparable adjustment should be reduced as follows. Now you can look into this. Sale price is same. Functions are same. Risk are same. Logistic, here supplier is paying, here other party is paying. Principally, margin should be same as well. So basically, this is a fair market price. This 400 is the fair market price as well. They know how it. we are not liable to adjust. And 10% is the margin in both of the cases because here one party is performing logistic function, they are charging 50. A is charging 50 to B for the logistic function which costs 50. B is performing logistic function by itself and B says this is the cost of 50. So in both of the cases, B cost will be 400 plus 50 sorry x cost will be 400 plus 50 450 b is already 450 because this is already built in into the price because this services has been provided by the supplier a so in both of the cases margin will be same 
So this is another method. Here we can apply the resale price method. The objective of this example is basically to identify, to highlight the functional analysis. But the example that we had discussed in a previous example, that was the method, how to calculate the resale price method in the RPM method. Resale price, sorry, resale price in the RPM method. So where is the applicable? OECD guidelines, even the law, even the guide issued by the FTA says this is the most recommended method for the distributors and the resellers. Why? Basically, they are asking whenever you are distributor, you are reseller, a lot of players are available into the market. There is a high degree of competition. When there is a high degree of competition, you will be able to identify the margin. This is the most challenging part, is how to identify the margin. The margin would be easily available. Second, lack of value addition function. If you are buying and selling, you are not adding any value, better to go for a resale price method instead of ascertaining the cost because you are just buying and selling. You need to look into your margin straightforward. This is another example. Third is administrative simplicity. Business is so simple. If you are a distributor, if you are a reseller, you are just buying and selling. You need to sell in a markup, sorry, margin, and you need to sell the goods into the market. So administrative simplicity, this is another factor that this method is recommended for the distributors and resellers. If I'm asking what is the summary of RPM method, first of all, we need to identify the related parties, A and B. We need to, to identify the transaction between them. Yes, we need to identify. We need to gather the information. Then we need to identify the comparable uncontrolled transaction. We need to identify the margin at the fair market value in between third parties. Then we need to adjust the differences. We need to calculate the margin. We need to adjust the resale price. We need to deduct the expenses. Then we will be able to arrive what should be the fair market value in between the related parties. We are, this is over from my side. If you are in need of any help for the impact assessment, implementation, advisory, and compliance services, you are always most welcome. You can contact me, mahar at .com. You can contact my colleague, Faiza, Shahid, Anwar, uh, Saqib is there. Any one of them, you can contact Lakshmi is there, Skina is there. You can speak to any one of them. You are most welcome. This is over from my side. We are always ready to listen, ready to understand, ready to deliver. You can speak to us at 971-433-91488. You can drop us an email at info at crestcooper.com. If you have any question, you are most welcome. If a QFZ company in designated FZ import the goods and export it to outside UAE from the same designated zone, is this QFZ income and subject to zero rated? Uh, you are asking basically qualifying income. Uh, you, it all depends on see either you are a distributor. If you are a distributor, first of all, you need to establish yourself a qualifying free zone person. There are six conditions for this. Once you are qualifying free zone person, then you need to, we need to look into this. Are you in the distribution business? If you are fulfilling all the conditions of a distribution business, then yes, it will be a qualifying income. It will be subject to zero rate. 0% corporate tax, then if any of the conditions is not being met, either you are not a qualifying for reason person or you are not in falling under the distribution business, then this income will be subject to tax. Any other question? If you have any question, you are most welcome. No further question? Okay, guys, take care. Thank you very much and have a lovely evening. Thank you. Bye-bye.